So what's the conclusion about system calls? Well, these are the things that are the primary way that a operating system gets from user space to kernel and back again. No longer are people tending to use call gates or interrupts. It's these system call assembly instructions, primarily for performance reasons. Now, if you're one of the students who's taking this class because you're following the primrose path on your way to exploitation, you should know that this also means that system calls are one of the primary attack surfaces of operating systems. These are the things where there's literally hundreds of functions that a given operating system allows user space to call, and if the operating system mishandles the parameters that the attacker-controlled code in user space sends it, that could mean that the operating system could be compromised. So you're going to learn more about system calls calls in future OS-specific classes because there's actually quite a bit of depth to what happens beyond just, you know, what parameters it feeds. Operating systems do a whole bunch of complicated things down this path. <clears throat> so we picked up a few more assembly instructions along the way, the primary one for 64-bit systems being syscall and sysret. If you watch the optional material, you'll see about how the 32-bit preferred sysenter and sysexit work. Swap.js was used for system calls or potentially interrupts in order to swap around data structures so the kernel can quickly get access to something when it's just transitioned in from user space. And then the read and write FS base and read and write GS base are means by which user space can now have more control over these data structures that are referenced by FS and GS.